Hello, and thank you for joining us for this Farmers Weekly series on animal nutrition. During this series, we bring you interviews with various experts from the Agricultural Research Council's Animal Production Institute to talk about the importance of animal nutrition and overall animal productivity. Our guest today is Dr. Bulelane Mazizi. Welcome, Bulelane. Thank you for having me. Bulelane, could you explain your role at the ARC? What, what does a typical day look like for you? I'm a junior researcher um, dealing with poultry. And um, a typical day it looks like um, just um, doing research on poultry in terms of the nutrition, um, in terms of um, the production, in terms of biosecurity, and uh, yes. Um, and in terms of um, the feed production as well. So what does a healthy bird look like in your opinion? What is a healthy bird? Well, a healthy bird um, is a bird that has, um, grows optimally. Um, the feed intake is optimal as well. And um, the water intake is as well. It doesn't have heat stress. A bird that is moving around, not staying in one area, that's a healthy bird for me. What are the basic requirements to raise a healthy bird, particularly in terms of nutrition? Um, you should have a balanced diet that comprises of um, the protein source, um, the energy source, um, the minerals, the vitamins. Um, the, um, the, the protein is very important and the minerals as well. So if you have that balanced diet, you will have a healthy bird. Can you elaborate on any ongoing research that the ARC is doing on poultry nutrition? Yes, um, um, currently in the industry there's a use of antibiotics. Um, in the long run these antibiotics uh, are, are have um, an effect on the bird in terms of, of, of bacterial resistance. So we're currently looking at um, new ways to stop the use of um, the antibiotics on a regular basis. And some countries overseas have um, banned the use of these antibiotics. Um, they're looking for new and innovative ways to, 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 to improve um, 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 growth performance of the animals because these antibiotics are in included in the diet to improve um, growth, they are called growth pro promoters. So um, we are looking at um, um, phytochemicals in plants that can be used as, um, as, as, as growth promoters. So we are looking at plants just like um, Moringa, um, we're looking at ginger, we're looking at um, plants such as, um, as, as, as green tea. Um, these are the main sources of, of, of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory properties and um, antibacterial properties. So we're looking at these plants and incorporating, incorporating them in the diet so that to help the animals um, improve growth instead of using antibiotics. And have there been any great success in that? Do you, what are the results of, of that testing of those trials? Um, those trials have yielded great results. Um, um, for instance, Moringa has been widely used worldwide now. Um, there's intense research on Moringa and even on humans as well. Um, 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 rooibos as well has been used and it, 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 it's very promising. And now we're trying to find other plants that can be used that are locally available that are cheap that um, a local farmer in, in in South Africa can incorporate in the plants and in the animal um, diets to improve growth. So moving on to biosecurity. Yes. Let's start with how important is biosecurity for poultry production? Well biosecurity is very important because it 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 it, it eliminates half of your problems in terms of diseases control. Um, a lot of people goes into the farm or into the production area um, will work, will have walked outside and, 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 and come in with these contaminants. So if you have a good biosecurity, a food path at the gate where everyone has to um, um, drench their, their feet 
um, not that much, but that's just the sole of the feet to eliminate any bacteria or any, any pathogens that have been stuck. And then um, have the employees shower because you don't know where, were they, where they were. So you give, they shower before and then wear protective clothing. And then uh, wear gumboots and, 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 and gloves when, before they can go and handle the animals. So if you have that, you have um, decreased now the, um, the rate of mortalities in your farm in terms of um, pathogens attacking your animals. So if you have biosecurity that is strict, you can have half of your disease control um, very controlled. And what about biosecurity then in terms of small scale farmers or communal farmers who may not have the facilities to cordon off their poultry? let's say, from the public or from other people that they might be sharing land with? How, how could they implement biosecurity measures? Yes, um, communal farmers um, can employ um, basic, basic um, biosecurity by a disinfectant and then put in a food bath, that's the first one, and then have, um, have um, basins where you put disinfectants just to wash your hands. So it's very important because it's one of the limiting factors um, when it comes to communal farmers because they lack these, this information. Um, it's the information that we need to put out there because it's one of um, um, the factors that really affect them and their production. So we need to give them the basic one because they might not have the technology that the large scale farmers have, but um, putting basic controls like food baths, or washing your hands on a regular in each section of the farm, it's very important. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be expensive in other words. It doesn't have to be expensive. Okay, so moving on to production systems. Is there a particular production system that may be more beneficial than another? So, for example, would my chickens perform better if I ran them in a free range system rather than in chicken houses, for example? Um, um, it depends on your target market. So if you're targeting large scale consumers, so you need um, 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 your chicken houses because that's where you have controlled everything and, and you have your, 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 your chickens reaching your target weight at a target time. But when it comes to free range, um, it can go for longer before they reach the target weight. So when it comes to such systems, you need to pick the best one. So if you're producing for large scale, I'd suggest you go for in-house. But if you're just producing for small scale, um, then you can go for free range. Plus, a lot of people now are becoming aware of, uh, of, of these. They prefer free range, um, mostly more than um, 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 house chickens. But um, I can say free range is slowly picking up, but um, if you're going to produce for a large population uh, where the demand is very high, um, the house is, is, is it's, it's, it's the optimum. And would you say that free range production is more expensive than housing production, for example? Yes, it is expensive um, due to the demand. Um, not everyone is able to do it, but it's mostly done in the, um, the communal farms. Um, if people are doing backyard um, chicken, raising their chicken in the backyard, they, they, they practice it, but for their own consumption. Um, but now the market has picked up on this and they going towards um, free range chicken because um, the perception is that um, um, the housed ones are not really healthy. They're not really producing the best chicken um, in terms of taste and everything. But um, if you're going to produce for large scale, that's housing. And if you're going to produce for a small scale or um, a, a smaller, and then you go for free range. And finally, if I could just move back onto the feeding again, yes. um, how would a farmer know that they are not feeding their chickens enough? What, what does inadequate feeding look like? So you monitor your, your, your growth performance on the animals. You know your, your chicken has to reach um, a certain age at a certain time, right? For instance, if you're doing um, broilers, you feed them for six weeks. 
it's a four-week starter grower, and then you have your two weeks finisher. So if when you're monitoring the growth of the animals, right, you will see that um, if they're not reaching this, the weight, the required weight at the time, that means there is something wrong, you know. So um, you need to monitor growth performance, feed intake, um, water intake, and then that will give you the answers to are these chicken performing better. Thank you very much, Bilani. Thank you so much for having me.